I arrived in Germany in uh, 2014. At the time, the huge influx uh, that happened in 2015 uh, didn't take place. It, was, it wasn't as crowded. I also had the privilege of uh, coming to, uh, uh, to Germany with a visa. And uh, my asylum st uh, process was uh, very quick. But after all, it was, uh, you could sense uh, the risks of staying in uh, those mass accommodation places. Uh, in the refugee camps. My roommate told me that uh, there were like two or three guys uh, saying that uh, this gay person, this homosexual, and uh, uh, planning to beat me up. So he warned me and then I, um, I, I actually never uh, had a confrontation with them, so I asked the social workers if I can come to the, to the camp just to collect my, my letters and uh, stay at friends. A year later, less, less than a year later after that, uh, the Shvul in Berlin started the refugee project. So I immediately applied because I had an experience before with working with Iraqi refugees in Syria, before the war in, uh, in Syria, uh, LGBT refugees. I was uh, just uh, trying to, um, I was working by myself. It wasn't uh, an official job but I was trying to help them access uh, like, uh, or encourage them to, to say, to declare their homosexuality to the UNHCR so they get uh, higher priority in the resettlement programs. The whole asylum uh, system is flawed. Like it's basic psychology to, to, to know that uh, if you put people like mass number uh, in mass numbers in like, you know, in those small tiny places, conflicts will, uh, will arise. So they will, uh, they will start uh, like fighting for their queue to the toilet or to get the food, the, the queue to, to, uh, to get the food. So uh, those conflicts will start to get bigger and bigger. And then eventually we people tend to go back to the mob mentality somehow and then start to unite against groups, certain groups. And uh, of course, the most vulnerable groups are women, children, and uh, LGBT people, queer people. We work with uh, um, LGBT refugees in Berlin, in the city of Berlin. We are an organization, a local organization in Berlin. Uh, we do social work uh, and social assistance and try to find solutions for our clients, whether uh, to, uh, to access medical services or uh, social services. And uh, we cooperate with other organizations that have uh, refugee projects as well. Uh, I think our biggest problem now is like, um, um, I keep saying this about Germany, they, once I arrived here, when I arrived here, they told me like, it's Germany, like laws don't change very easily. But because of the <laughs> far right uh, and uh, uh, it, was, it was very easy for this current government to change the laws to, to the wars for, uh, for refugees and make it even more difficult. So I think for us, uh, this is our biggest problem because like, uh, the, I, I feel the message that is being sent by governments now is that, okay, we believe that all of our citizens are uh, xenophobes and racists and anti-refugees, so we're going to make it difficult for refugees to come. Uh, this is the assumption that uh, Mr. Trump is doing in the U.S. and also uh, Mrs. Merkel is doing here. I have been working on the Syrian issue, uh, Syrian LGBT issue for a while. And uh, for me, it's uh, just uh, maybe a lot more pressure to highlight the, the dilemma and the plight for, of uh, Syrian uh, refugees in uh, Syria's neighborhood because they flee uh, homophobia to, a homophobia, uh, to homophobic countries. This is the thing I would, I would want to see from, like just understanding that there are LGBT refugees in, uh, who fled their countries and they are in the so-called transit countries now. And I think those people are in need of more help because you have organizations in each country and each city to help the refugees that are based there. But I think uh, as a collaborative work for, for all organizations, I think we should pay, pay more attention to, uh, to this uh, issue as well.